Hello, my name is Greg and I'm a data school consultant at the Information Lab. Today I'm going to walk you through how to build a dynamic org chart in Tableau. This chart is a great way to visualize the structure of a team in an engaging way. For this to work, you're going to need a version of Tableau which supports parameter actions. They were first introduced in version 2019.2 and for that reason they're my favourite new release. Before we start the walkthrough though, I just want to point out that this org chart concept built on Jeffrey Schaefer's existing work with tree node charts. You'll be able to read more on that if you follow the link in the description below. This video will cover the steps in Tableau to building this chart and will not cover the process of preparing your data set beforehand. I will, however, show you the structure of the data set we are using, and you can read in more detail about this in the accompanying blog in the description below. First, I created a data set where every row represented a branch of the tree. I'm going to show you the structure and key components of the data set by building out a table in Tableau. So in the chart that you just saw, every branch had a start and an end node ID, these identify each of those nodes. They also had information about start and end node positions, which in this data set are called P1 and P2. And then there's the position of those nodes along the Y axis, which in this case I've called end node level and start node level. I also created a path field, which I'll revisit a little later on. This path field is what will enable us to build a dynamic drill down. Finally, to complete the data set, I followed Jeffrey Schaefer's instructions, joining the T and T2 fields that are the 49 individual coordinates required to build the curved sigmoid lines of the view. Drag these on here. They need to be dimensions. that are discrete, just to show you. So here, if we just focus on a single branch, so I'm going to keep only this first branch, you'll see that there are 49 rows or marks in the view. In other words, there are 49 coordinates for this particular branch. You can check out the blog for more detailed instructions on how the T and T2 coordinates are determined. Okay, now let's build the chart. First, we're going to follow Jeffrey Schaefer's method for building a static org chart. We need to write two calculations in Tableau to create the curves of the chart. The first is an expression to create a sigmoid function. So I'm going to go and create a calculated field called sigmoid function. So I actually copied this formula, um, which I, pre already, I already had pre-typed. Um, so feel free to pause the video uh, and at various stages when I type calculations like this. Okay, then using the sigmoid function we'll be able to create the curve function. So again I'm going to copy paste this from earlier. Okay, so once you have that typed, press OK. And just with these two relatively simple or short calculations, we're going to be able to build the skeleton of the org chart. First, drag curve onto columns, then drag T2 onto rows, leave them as sums. Then we need to add the detail to the view to actually build the individual branches. So drag branch onto detail, then right click, drag T onto, branch, onto detail, selecting T here, so it's a dimension. And here we're already starting to see the org chart form itself. Change the org chart, change the chart type, sorry, to a line. And here we have the first skeleton. Now let's create a calculation that will allow us to add marks to the ends of these lines. So I'm going to go in and create another calculated field, which I'm going to call points. This table calculation will only return a mark for rows at the start and the end of a partition. In other words, once we configure the table calculation in the view, we'll be able to instruct it to draw marks at the top and bottom of each branch. 
These will be the squares or the circles that will represent individuals on the org chart. To add those points, drag points onto rows. This will create a second chart for now. Then right click and select a dual axis to bring those two charts together. Make sure you also right click on the axis on the right hand side here and select that they should be, synch they should be synchronized. Okay, now remove measure names from both of those charts. Now we need to modify the configuration of the table calculation here. We need to make sure that we select T as the dimension which is being computed. That way, as you can see, points are appearing at the top and the bottom of each of the branches. Now finally, from a formatting perspective almost, we can change the chart type to a shape. This way you'll be able to change the shape of those points. So already you can see the org charts coming to life. Now we're at the stage, I think we can start to clean up a little bit before we can add, before we start to add the drill down functionality. First, let's flip the view on its head to match how org charts are actually usually represented. So I'm going to right click on the Y axis and I'm going to select Reverse. Next, I'm going to right click on the X axis and to center the, make sure the chart is always centered, I'm going to untick Include Zero. Now, there's plenty of other formatting things we could do at this point, but I'm just going to leave the chart as is for now as we're still building it. Let's move on to the part where we make this chart dynamic. The key field that will make this possible is the path field. So let's take another look at it. Now I'm going to remove a filter which was only on one branch at this point. And just to get rid of all this detail, I'm going to remove T1 and T2 as well. And let's look at all these path fields here. So what you can see is that the path field is capturing which nodes would have been passed through to arrive at a given branch. So here we're dealing with a branch, for instance, at level two to three. Let's look at this one. So you can see that the branch connects to node nine to node 28. And this here is represented. In other words, the branch will have passed through nine and 28 at this point. In other words, you should think of the path field like a bit of a breadcrumb. The drill down works by filtering out the branches whose IDs do not match the pattern of the last clicked on path field. To achieve this, we will use parameter actions to capture which path is selected by a user and then a calculated field to compare that path value in the parameter with the node's ID. So first, we're going to need to create another two calculated fields and a parameter. So the first calculated field creates a path with a point at the top of the org chart, which would not otherwise have a single path value associated with it. This way, when a user clicks on the top node, it will reset the view. So I'm going to call this field path or parameter. There I've copied this in from the calculation I typed earlier. This is just to catch the one condition of this top node here. Now let's create the parameter, which using parameter actions will capture the path selected by a user. So let's call this particular parameter selected path. There's not actually much to configure in this parameter. We just need to make sure that it's a string. And I'm just going to add a little hyphen here, but you don't actually need to do that. The reason for that is the parameter is going to be constantly updated when a user clicks on a node in the view. Make sure you've added the path of parameter um, calculated field to the view in detail. And now we're going to add the, the mechanism that will enable users to update the parameter when they click on a node. So go to Worksheet and then select Actions to create a parameter action. I'm going to call this parameter action Update Path. 
Now, there's actually not very much to configure here again. We're simply instructing the selected path to update based on the path for parameter field. So path for parameter and update selected path. Now let's just check that's working. I'm going to right click on the parameter on the left hand side and select show parameter. And now I'm going to start clicking on nodes in the view to see if it updates. As you can see, Tableau is reflecting the latest selected path. Now finally, we need to create the calculation that will return a true false result depending on whether or not a given point matches the pattern of the selected path. Our calculated field will need to assess this condition for each level of the org chart. Okay, so one final calculated field, and then we'll have our dynamic org chart. So let's call this one show path. And again, I'm going to copy paste it from when I typed it earlier. Now I appreciate this calculation is a little bit difficult to get your head around. So if you'd like to understand it in more detail, head to the blog in the description. So I'll click OK here. And now we can use this Boolean show path, drag it to the filters select true and already we've been fil we've filtered to the latest selected path click on the top node to return to the very to um, the top view of the hierarchy and you can test that this works throughout there you have it your dynamic org chart there's plenty of formatting you can still do from here some of which I'll touch upon in my blog so do check that out if you want to find out more Thank you for watching this video and I hope you can now feel confident making a dynamic org chart yourself. Please check the description of this video for links to additional material you might find helpful. If you enjoyed this video, you'd love How to Make a Tree Plot by my colleague Carmen. Click on the link to, on the screen to watch it next.